Hello everyone and welcome to Day Trader S&P 500. It's Saturday, May 21, year 2022. This is Dale Woodson, editor of Woodson Wave Report and Day Trader S&P 500. We've been showing you guys the cues quite often in the beginning. I um, want to touch base again there. This is a daily chart. And when we were showing you the last few days or weeks, we've had this target up here for quite some time. And it hit it. Uh, 280, I got an alert on uh, on my uh, phone um, when it happened and uh, took some profits, left some on the table. But uh, that's been a, a pretty long-standing uh, target, if you will, after the 313 target was hit. And uh, since that is a three, you can see here we've got a, a one down with red and circle, two up. There's where three equals one right there. There's lower targets, as you can see. But let's do a little analysis here real quick. Let's get a retracement on that. I'll get as close to on the point as possible. And there's our wave four target at 315.63. That may be off by a little bit. I'm not sure. But you can see here, that would be a four. I'll put that four up there. As you know, the high of four cannot go above the low of one, and the low of one is 317.45. This is 315.63. As you may recall in the ES, and I'm sure it was the same way in the cash, this fourth wave up couldn't even get to the 382 because the wave one low was below it. And um, we can get into that later, but it held. But that's the uh, wave four targets. I'm going to give the first one because if it is a four, it can't go up here to these higher targets because it would be higher than the low of wave one. But uh, let's get into, let's take that out real quick. And you can see this is where three equals one. There are lower extension targets and we can get into those. Well, they're right there. The uh, 1272 is 255.76. The 1.414 is 242.78, and the 1.618 extension is 224.13. I never used to list these 1.272s and 1.414s, but I noticed a few months ago that the market was extending in between the 1.0 and the 1.618. I plugged those in and started getting direct hits, okay? So that's the cues. I want to touch base on uh, the longer term real quick here. Let's use the S&P cash. That is the, this is a weekly log chart, and that's the pandemic low, March 23rd of 2020. And that's the all-time high in uh, January. I think it was January 4th. And you can see we've got an A down. I'll put that in here real quick for you guys, okay? Let's get the A, B, C going, okay? There's the A, there's the B, and there's the C so far. And you can see that that C has hit right on the Fibonacci 382 retracement of this entire move up okay i have two different counts here we're going to know which one's in play relatively soon okay one of them marks this as a three okay and the other one marks it as a five if this is a three we get a four down there's a perfect 382 it could go farther if it's a five this decline is going to go much lower uh, speaking of a little bit lower you can see right here is where it's a 1.618 that is where c is a 1.618 right here by the 50% retracement and let me un let me expand that so we can see those numbers are pretty close yeah, you can see the 50% is at 3505 and the uh, 1618 for wave C is 3492 so right in there right around 3500 would be an ideal place if that's just a fourth wave obviously if the top is a five and not a three, it's probably going to go lower, but it needs to at least correct this advance, which at a minimum it has. But we'll, by the way, look at this. How many red bars? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in a row. By the way, the Dow had eight weeks in a row down, consecutive weeks down for the first time in 100 years so uh, welcome to the bear market okay like I tell my subscribers it's a bear market surprises will be to the downside okay let's uh, let's get into I want to show you guys this here real quick here's our uh, get you guys caught up to YouTube okay by the way we've had this for a long time okay let me start the other way we'll go back okay let me go all the way to the bottom. Our positions for rating services, which are hardly even in existence anymore. Here they are here. I've had them since started writing the newsletter 25 years ago. But uh, 
show you guys this right here. We established a short position basically at the high of the NASDAQ. And we've been short ever since. It's way better to be in front of these moves than to chase them from behind, okay? And uh, we haven't changed. We're short on the S&P. Okay, remain short, remain short, short on the Dow. Again, we moved on 11.26 there, intermediate and short NASDAQ, 11.26, okay? So um, we weren't caught off guard and neither were our subscribers to our newsletter, which you're looking at now. The other key thing I want to show you is... This could be, um, instead of one, two, and three, it could be A, B, and C. I've had this up for a while, but we've had this target. But we had it originally in the 3,900s, and now it's 3,732. We'll get into that. And this date here, which is Monday, we'll get into that later too. But uh, that's what we're looking at, okay? Uh, let me see if I had anything else here I wanted to show you guys. Yeah, we'll get into this. I might as well. Eh, let's do it chronologically. This is a, this is important stuff here too. Okay, so let's move along. Um, I want to get into the um, where is it at here? The daily on the ES. There it is. Okay, it's a little crowded here. A lot of stuff going on. But the purple is the uh, dates and the prices, and the black is the um, wave count. Okay, I want to start with the alternate count here. That's in red. Okay, from the all-time high, let me squeeze that down just a little bit. We have a one down, a two up, a three down here on May 12th. And if you guys remember, uh, we had four. And again, uh, this is what I was talking about before. It can't go to the 382. Like in the queues, it it can. Here, let me show you. In the queues, it can. Remember, we had that four right there. It could go because the one wasn't too low in the uh in the ES, it can't. So we had a four make or break at 4101.75, which is right there, which is that low right there on February 24th. And lo and behold, it held. Okay, so that four didn't even reach, if this is a count, and again, it's our alternate count, but that four did not even reach a 382 retracement. I never published those because it couldn't reach them, but it held and it made a lower low. Okay, so the alternate count. Follow with me in the red. One in parentheses in red. Two up in parentheses in red. Three down in parentheses in red. Four up in parentheses in red. Five down, alternate count. That would be A. So in the alternate count, this entire move from January to May, basically over five months, almost six months, is A, down. Then there'll be a B up and a C down. And um, I think, yeah, those are the retracement levels for B. I'm handling the alternate count first. That's the bullish case scenario, which, by the way, has a much lower target for C than the than the bearish case. But it would be up first, then down big. Okay, so these targets are uh, 4189, 4308, 4426, 45.94, a move above the all-time high is obviously make or break, and it's not a B up anymore. Um, so that's what we're looking at there. That's the alternate count. All right, the primary count is in black, and it labels this five-wave decline as wave A. There's a beginning diagonal triangle with wave four. All right, wave B up here, and then we have one in circle, two in circle, three in circle, four in circle, and bang, there was the five. This is where it's a little bit tricky with this lower low, because this lower low means that's the beginning of the next wave down. These five waves with the circle around them make the larger degree wave one. That means wave two up didn't even get a 382 retracement, and now all of a sudden we're in wave three down. Okay, we're in black. Keep in mind there, that's the one and that's the two. There's the three targets, and they're down there. And if this was A in black, and that's B up in black, then that's C down in, in black, and there are the targets there. Okay, I don't know that I have them um, labeled off, but I do have this one, two, and then three in here. And you can see there's our turn date coming up Monday. We'll get into that later. There's those. This is one. That is two. It got a little scrunched up there. And there are those three of C targets there. Should get all the way down to 28. Again, um, my... Uh, Paid subscribers to the newsletter are pleasantly shocked and surprised that the market got down into 3,800s. And as I always say, um, 
it's just math and I'm reporting the numbers. These are mathematical targets and that's what they are, upside and downside. Obviously a move up above here brings those B targets in, a move down below this low brings those three of C targets in and the larger wave three. Let me see if I got a pick for this for you guys. Let me get into, uh, there it is there, and I wanted to expand on this too, okay? So again, you see the primary count, there's A down, there's B up on March 29, and this is one of C, okay? That's a smaller degree of trend, those five ways with a circle in black, and then there are those three targets. Here's the thing, um, impulsive waves in the direction of the main trend are five waves, nine waves, 13 waves, 17 waves, etc. to infinity. And while corrective are, are three, seven, um, and so forth, okay? This is a total of seven waves. See this wave down here? This was five waves in black. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Then we had an A, B, C up. Then we got one, two, three, four, five. I didn't put it in here, but that is six and that is seven. Seven doesn't look like it's done, but we need nine or 13. So this has some ways to go. We need at least nine ways. I got that in, in blue there. So um, we will see how this plays out, okay? But um, it doesn't look like it's done yet, okay? And that is the uh, daily bar. Let me get into the 10-minute uh, the bar if I can. See if I have that here. Here's the 10-minute. We're going to look from this 4095 high on the 17th. Let me give you some perspective on that. Did we get into it? No, we didn't. Okay. By the way, see all these targets and actuals? That's two points away. That's uh, four and a quarter. That's one. That's two. Um, th these, this math and this hitting the math, okay? So um, our subscribers are happy about that because we're able to just hit pinpoint up and down, up, down, down, up, so on. I want to show you guys this right here. From the May 17th high, we have a one down, a two up. Look at this three. It's not a 1.618 multiple. It's not a 2.618 multiple. It's not a three. It is 4.618, a tiny four, and then a five within a point of our target, okay? Then we have a, a wave up in two, which is a right within uh, two points of a Fibonacci 382. And then here's where the fun begins, okay? So now we have wave three of three down, and we've got one down, two up, okay? Notice that the move up, okay, well, here's the thing. I think I can show this better on the uh, actual chart. It was a huge move down and a huge move up. Well, this is the actual chart, Dale. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let me measure this. I want to show you guys something. This was how far? This was a 3.59% decline within the day, okay? And then what did it do? Okay, we're, we're going to set this up for you guys. Then it made from a 3.59% decline, percent decline, it made a rise of 2.59, basically 2.58, 2 okay? So if the wave three of three down is going to happen. That's three of this larger three. What a better way to shake out the shorts than to run this all the way up before the close before you take it down on the turn date on May 23rd. That being said, we have our our uh, risk reward, our make or break, okay? This two up cannot go above here, 39.47.50. Uh, Sunday is going to be very interesting. I cannot wait for the open because are they going to take it up to the 786 to shake out the shorts before they take it down? Or are they just going to run it up past here, okay, and make that B wave happen? So both are in play, and the the case for the B wave has much higher targets, and the case for 3 of 3 has much larger targets. Look at these targets here. I mean, this gets all the way down into the 35 and 3600s. And again, you might say, Dale, that's ridiculous. Well, yeah, that's what they said uh, back here. When we were in the 4,800s, we'll never get to 4,000. We'll never get below 4,000. We'll never get to, here we are in the 3,800s, okay? So, like I said, it's math, and I'm just reporting the numbers. But that's what we're looking at there. And we've been sending out uh, low-risk, high-reward updates. Um, customers are loving it, but um, we've had some unbelievable setups. And the other one was back on the 4,300s, back at that triple. But that's an a story for another time okay so this is what we're looking at near term 
one down and two up. It cannot go above there, okay? Sunday night's going to be real interesting. Let's look at, um, I wanted to show you guys this pick of this 10-minute uh, bar. Is that it? No, that's the daily. There's the 10-minute. Again, there is wave two up, and we've got a one down, two up, a three at a 4.618 multiple, four and a five. Why is that important? Because these are all fractals of each other. What you see here, you'll see on a bigger, a longer term, bigger than 10-minute chart, like an hourly, okay? So say, for instance, this three, this wave is a fractal of this wave. So if we get one down and two up, it's possible that this three down will do a 4.618. I don't even know the math on that, but it's way down there. Maybe not on this third wave, but the larger degree of trend, because that is the same degree. But it's on the table, and the uh, the turn date of 523 is on the table. And again, uh, we're giving our newsletters, these num these newsletter subscribers, these numbers in advance with these huge swings, as you're seeing, three and more percent each direction, both directions within the same day. Um, it's not a trading service, and I don't provide specific trades, but I just give the numbers to the targets, and the customers are using the make or break numbers for uh, their stops and using the, uh, the targets, the uh, Fibonacci extensions and retracements for entries and exits. So most investors and traders are getting whipsawed, and we're keeping our subscribers ahead of the turns, giving them these targets in advance okay so let me see if there's something else i want for you guys i got that uh es there i think that's about it again there's the cues and reviews there's the the bigger trend is is that the end of the decline or not okay we're gonna see um and also uh that i want to leave you guys with um this pick here again this is this was so key this move down here that 38.55 let me get on it here. I have one more thing I wanted to show you guys. The um, the 38.55 was critical resistance for any lower lows. It was been that way since it was established back here on the 12th. Okay, again, it was within two points of our target. All right, and then we had a huge move up, and then we had this huge move down, double bottom, if you will. Next time it came up, and that's what I put out to our subscribers. This is an impulsive wave, five waves to the downside. This is corrective and overlapping. And I don't think it made much more than the 382 right there. And then it gave, I told the, our customers, once 38.55 goes, then look out below. And that's exactly what happened on Friday. So uh, that was key. We were keyed on that number. And as soon as it went, Katie bar the door to the downside, okay? So that's what we're looking at there. I'll leave you guys with this pick here. And um, we'll see what Sunday night and Monday brings, okay? Um, it has the potential to be huge, Monday does. It's a 55 days from that March 29. I've been wrapping this up for too long, but I'm going to wrap it up here. It is, get to it here. There it is. It is 55 Fibonacci days from the wave two or B high. OK, um, so it has the potential to be a panic or spike low, but we'll have to see how that plays out. I don't like the way Friday played out with a huge move up over 2 percent in the last hour. Ideally, if Monday was going to be a, a panic spike low situation, Friday would have closed on its lows and uh, then the futures would be big down on Sunday night. So it's on the table, but odds decreased with Friday's price action. Okay, really curious what happens Sunday night and Monday. And until then, take care, everyone.